good afternoon. We have another episode of Rocky Beyond the Walls for you. Pastor AJ here with you today. And if you were with us uh, over the last uh, three weeks, we have jumped into the book of Matthew. And my hope <clears throat> is that we, over essentially almost 84 messages, are going to walk through the book of Matthew over the next year and a half or so. But we're going to be interjecting some smaller preaching series in there that take us uh, out of the book of Matthew, but not out of the context of the book of Matthew to dive deeper into things that Matthew himself is bringing about in the text. And so uh, I'm very excited about that. I'm excited for some of the other uh, communicators that will be joining us. Uh, some uh, you know and some you don't that will be able to share insights from the text over the next year and a half. And I'm just super pumped to be going through a gospel where uh, part of our vision, as you know, is to elevate our offer Christ so looking at the earthly ministry of Christ is of utmost importance uh, for us here in the season that we're in as a church. We began our vision for this year, our Just One vision. And just a reminder, uh, we have our night of worship coming up on Monday, February 12th. This is like a must, you guys. Let's all be there. And I want you to be thinking about and praying about that one name, that one person, and uh, that night, I think, is going to be really special for our church family as we bring these names before the Lord and we ask him to, to bless these individuals, bless our uh, attempts, feeble as they are at times, to uh, have connections um, in, in spiritual conversations with those that God brings to us. And we want to continue <clears throat> throughout this year to be praying for our people uh, as we seek to have great conversations with them and, and really build relationships with them if we don't have one already. Uh, all that to say, <clears throat> we looked at uh, a very intriguing passage this weekend, The Temptation of Jesus in the Wilderness, and I framed it from the perspective of if we actually believed what Satan believes about God, how would that kind of translate into temptation. Meaning, if we really understood all that Satan knows about God, which is probably not possible, but, but if we were to become a theologian, if you will, like Satan is, he believes true things about who God is, how would that help us when temptation comes our way? And uh, I walked you through some, some beliefs and some responses that Christ had uh, in relationship to the temptations. And so I just want to look at a few of these things and highlight some things for you this afternoon. So Jesus is led into the wilderness by the Spirit after his baptism, and Satan offers kind of three temptations, if you will, or avenues in which I really believe Satan was trying to disconnect Jesus from the relationship that he had with his father becoming kind of self-sustaining and not submissive to the father's will. And the first one is this. Jesus has been in the wilderness fasting for 40 days. And at that 40-day mark, Satan enters the scene and he basically asks Jesus, if you are the son of God, turn that rock into bread. Satan knew he was hungry. It's obvious to us that we would, we would be hungry 40 days without food. And Jesus responds uh, in, a, in a great fashion in which he says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Satan truly believes that God can sustain. Satan truly believes that God can take a rock and very well turn it into bread. Keep in mind, Satan was there at creation. He was there in the garden. For I don't know how long, eternity passed, Satan was a guardian cherub. He knew God. He knew his authority. He knew his power. He knew his abilities. So it wasn't like Satan was asking Jesus to do something that couldn't be done. Once again, he wanted Jesus to doubt that God could provide, the Father could provide what he needed. 
Then the devil took him to the top of the temple, 180 feet tall, and says to him, if you're the son of God, throw yourself off, and essentially your angels will catch you before you hit the pavement. It's pretty interesting. Jesus, in response to, to this, says, again, it is written, you shall not put your Lord, your God, to the test. I think Satan truly believed that if Jesus were to jump, he actually would be saved. Like, there's power and authority there in Christ's divinity. Now, we don't know if Satan actually knew if Jesus was the Messiah. Maybe he was testing Jesus to see, could he die, could he not? We don't know that. But we know how, how Christ responds, and he says, don't test the Father. I don't need to test the Father to figure out if the Father is who he says he is. And then lastly, he takes him to a very high mountain, and in an instant, it says, it shows him the kingdoms of the world, which I mentioned on Sunday was really the Roman Empire. And here we start to see the motivation for all of these temptations, and it's grounded in the dragon's desire to be worshipped as God is worshipped, right? And he said to him, all these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to Satan, Be gone, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, in him only shall you serve. Uh, verse 11, that the devil leaves, and the angels come, and the text says they minister to him. What a fascinating exchange. And so uh, I presented some, some big idea statements that might come your way when the dragon is, is trying to tempt you, right? And, it, and it, there's, there's themes here we see in Genesis 3, we see in this interaction, we even see on the cross, where Satan is trying to convince us that God isn't enough. He's withholding. He can't sustain you. He really needs to be tested before you believe that he's faithful. These are things when we think about application, we can anticipate before the temptation comes our way. And, and I hope it's helpful for you that as we look at the battle we are in, which is a spiritual one, no doubt, we can anticipate the moves of the adversary. So this week, be on guard, right? Guard your thoughts, guard your heart. And ultimately, feast on the word of God, which sustains you. And there's great promises with that. There's great uh, protectiveness in that. And so I hope that this has been an encouraging journey for you. We really jumpstart the ministry of Jesus here in the next chunk of chapter 4 this coming weekend. Come worship with us. Let us know how we can be praying for you and your family. And you are a blessing. Take care.